Welcome to the Partner Business Technical Support Team. My name's Phil and I'll be giving you a brief introduction as to how to go about programming or adding a wireless pendant, such as the one on this training board here. Before we do any programming uh, for adding a pendant, what I'd like to do is just quickly take you through uh, the devices we're using uh, to basically enable this to happen. So what I've got is I've got a wireless three button key pendant, so we've got on, off and a panic button. The panic button is located right in the uh, centre. What we also have is the um, HomeSafe's main um, console, uh, main panel, main circuit board. Uh, what we've got from here, we've got a, as we have with the other videos, battery, main circuit board, this particular one is a 16 zone home safe security system. You can tell that just by the uh, uh, this additional circuit board that gets plugged onto the top of the unit. You've got a key card reader um, module and you also have a CBUS integration module located there. So depending on what model you've purchased will depend on what, what additional items you actually see inside here. Uh, what we also have, and this is the most important part to all of this, because if we don't have this device, you're not going to get any keypad pendants working. So wireless key pendants working. So what this is, it's a 5400 RF. So basically, it's the radio, it's the uh, radio interface to basically enable your key, uh, your pendants to talk with the home safe con um, panel. So what I'll quickly do now is I'll walk you through how to actually uh, hook this up. Before we hook up the RF module to the actual home safe security system, what we need to do is we basically need to make sure that there's no power uh, on the actual system itself. The reasons why we do that, there are two main reasons, for your own safety, as well as to ensure no damage uh, is incurred onto the actual PCB board. So the first thing, well, after you've down powered it, so you've disconnected the battery, you've disconnected it from mains, basically what you do is you get the RF module and just plug that straight into that unit there. So that's the receiver port, so in case you didn't see that, it's just the port just up the uh, top there. That's the receiver port and that's where the uh, 5400 RF module gets plugged into. So what I'm going to do for this uh, video is I'm going to leave the cover off uh, just so we can get a bit a uh, better feel for what's actually happening with the system. Now the first thing I'm going to do uh, is basically power the system up so now that the RF modules installed, um, right, connect the battery as well as connect it to mains power. So just for now just ignore the battery light, uh, that was just something that came across from the previous exercise. So the first thing we need to do is enter into the, well, enter in the master code. So the master code is the uh, if you've watched the other video in, in relation to programming user codes, it's the P201E. So this is the code that you basically enter in if you wanted to change entry, exit delays, user codes, all that sort of thing. So as a default, the master code is 123. So to enter in the programming mode, just go P123E. And we know we're in the program mode because we've got program appearing uh, just in the bottom right hand corner. So the next step is to enter in what's known as the installer mode. So the installer mode as a default, the key, the code is six zeros. So both of these codes are going to depend on how the system has been set up, if they've been changed or if they're the same. Typically they're going to be changed because of for security reasons. So because my board's default, I'm just going to use the default passcode. Just go P123456E. And now I'm in the installer mode. So the installer mode, the way you can tell whether you're in the installer mode is just that icon down the bottom there. So basically it's the program mode's flashing, therefore in installer mode. So the next step we need to do uh, is basically create a new user. Now uh, if you're unfamiliar with how to do that, just refer to the uh, programming or adding a user to the home safety security system video. Um, but essentially what we need to do, uh, we've got six, uh, 56 possible users that can be programmed into this. 
It ranges from P201E, which is also the master code, uh, all the way through to, I'll quickly have a look at it on the uh, installation instruction. Uh, on page 71 you'll find this, all the way through to P256E. Now what I like doing is just gen for general practice and for, um, you know, uh, if anyone else has to come in the store or play around with the system, is always for the radio keys, use the last uh, user code allocations. So, I'm in program mode, what I need to do is go P256E. Now, there are no user codes currently programmed into this. Uh, I need to go into what's known as the extra options mode. If I wanted to program a user code, all I need to do is enter in a code, press E. Enter that same code, press E. And, that, and that's a new user programmed into it. But because we want to do something a bit more, we want this keypad here to basically activate, sorry, arm and disarm the system. We need to go into what's known as the extra options mode. To do that, you just go exclude E. And what you should find, just ignore what I'm about to do, you should find as a default what you see on the screen here. Now, what we require to, in order to get this done, we need to basically make sure that 5 is illuminated, or you can see 5. What 5 is, is it basically enables uh, the wireless component to that user code. So essentially, just think of this as a user code. When you press the button, the user code is sent. Now, like I said, really important, have 5 illuminated at this point. From here, just press exclude E. That will ex exit the extra, uh, extra options for the user code. And from here, what we need to do is we need to get this system ready to uh, receive a command from the actual remote. So we basically need to pair these two up. And the way we go about pairing it up, we need to, after we've checked that five is illuminated on the keypad panel, we need to get this uh, system ready to receive a signal. To do that, we go 1E, it's got, you've got the uh, OK ready to arm uh, option appearing down the bottom left hand corner, so basically it's saying it's ready to receive a signal. All we need to do is on the three button uh, key input, just press on. And what's happened is, I don't know whether you've seen it, but up in this top left hand corner you've got like a little radio signal. This system received a radio signal, whether it's good, bad, whatever, it, it did receive something. And now that this icon, the OK Ready to Arm icon has disappeared, we now know that it's received it. So to test it, simply just go PE to exit program mode. And I've got memory flashing, so what I'll do is I'll just clear that memory by pressing memory E, then E again. And I'll quickly press on to arm the system. System's now armed. So the entry delay zone, or the entry exit delay time will now be initiating. And what I need to do if to disarm the system, just press the off. And the security systems now disarmed. So this basically concludes how to go about programming uh, key code, or sorry, key pendants within your home safe security system. Uh, for more information on how to do this, just uh, refer to the installation instruction for the home safe security system. It's all in there. If you'd like to speak to somebody about it, uh, just contact the partner business technical support team. Uh, if you need their number, just contact one of your local Clipsal uh, representatives. Thank you for watching.